Hello, Liz here with Liz's Crafts. How is everyone? My dear friends, my crafty friends. So today what we're going to do is take this Dollar Tree board and turn it into something a little bit different. So I just got this at Dollar Tree a couple days ago. And I took it apart. So this is the, the very uh, front part of it. And I'm going to Mod Podge this piece of um, canvas to it. So I'm just going to put a generous amount of Mod Podge on my board. You know, it does kind of soak it up a little bit. So I want to be sure that I have enough that my material adheres to it. And then uh, once this dries, then I want to uh, stencil on top of it. But that'll come later. Because we have other Mod Podging and other things that we need to do before we can stencil. So I'm just putting, and I got my canvas at Michael's. Uh, it was in a package of one and a half yards for uh, $9.99, but then I also had a 20% off coupon. So uh, it wasn't that, it didn't cost that much. I think it was $7.99 after the coupon. Okay, so I just have this little roller here, and I'm going to, roll my canvas down onto my board and here we have it nice and crisp no bubbles nothing like that so i'm going to set that aside to dry and then we're going to work on the other board so the other board was this piece right here and what i want to do with it is i want to mod podge some burlap onto it now this is an actual burlap feed bag that I got for free last year. So I'm just going to Mod Podge that right on there. Once I get it on there, then I'm going to trim it up. So again, we're going to be using um, you know, quite a bit of Mod Podge. And it will make the um, feed bag stiff once we put it on there. And that's just going to be our background for our piece. So it's going to be a nice, like, I don't know, farmhouse, rustic, kind of country piece of decor. We will be using a Maker Studio products today, and I will put links to the products I'm using in the description so that you can click right on to it. And if you do decide to buy anything, please purchase from my links as I do get a little percentage. And that's how I can uh, keep putting my crafts out there for everyone to see and enjoy. So I'm just going to lay my burlap on top. I'm going to make sure that I have it in the right position so that um, it fully covers my board. Just pressing it down with my fingers. And then I'm going to use my roller on it. Then I think what I'm going to do is flip it over and just press down on it. Okay, 
now I want to put some Mod Podge on this top handle. I'm just going to set my Mod Podge aside for now. Go ahead and take my roller on that top part. And then I'm going to trim this up a little bit with my scissors. So I'm just flipping it over and I'm just trimming the edges. Now we may have to add a little bit mod, a little bit more Mod Podge once we get this all trimmed up and turned around. And it's okay if it's not perfectly in line with the uh, outline of the, um, the board here. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of this excess. I think I'm going to add more Mod Podge on the handle. It doesn't seem to be sticking as well, so let's put quite a bit on there. Okay, there we go. And we'll wait for that to dry before we cut the hole out of the uh, the handle because if I do it now I might not, not get it correctly so I'm just going to continue to clean this up a little bit on the back side as much as I can That looks pretty good. So I'm going to set this board aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the back side. I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to trace this circle. So I'll know where I need to cut. Just put an X, did the Sharpie around and just put an X in there. And I might, I might use a Sharpie to cut that out. I'm not quite sure yet. But I will trim the bottom up a little bit.
And the slide here is a little long. And then we'll check the other side and see. Okay. Well, the other side looks pretty good. Okay. So this is what we got for this board here, for our bottom board. Then we have this for our top board, which should be, I don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my uh, heat gun on it a little bit, because it's still, it's, you know, it feels a little damp to the touch. And then I have these um, these ends that I took off of the original board. So I want to put those back in the same holes. If I can. Let's see where it is. That way I'm not putting my stencil where it sh it's not going to show up because of these little tacks. And these came on the board that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just took them all. There it is. <laughs> anyway, I found it. Okay, got that one on. Got two more to go. I'm putting it through the back end here so it'll poke a little hole in the front end so I know exactly where it's supposed to go. That's the only reason I'm putting it on the back. Because otherwise, I don't know where the hole is. And I don't want to remove my canvas. Okay, so we just got one more to go. I think I know where it is. I think. Maybe not. Let's see if I was right. But this this one's kind of bent. Okay. Let's see what we can do. Just not sure. These are a little harder to get in than you think they would be. Just like little tacks. Okay, let's see. Interesting. It just not does not want to go, but it is crooked. I don't know if that's the reason. Okay, here we go. Alright, right there. So if it went through on this end, it should go through on the front side too. If I can get it back out. Why is this so difficult? Okay, here we go. And 
and I lost it. Are you kidding me? Okay, where are you? Well, I'll tell you what. I guess I'm just going to have to look for this after I get off of here. And figure out where it went. And then put it on later before I take the picture. So anyway, at least I know where it's supposed to go. So we're going to use this stencil here. It's um, God is our refuge, strength, a very present help in trouble, Psalm 46, 1. And it comes two stencils in a pack. The other stencil is with God, all things are possible, Matthew 19, 26. Now we could use either one. I just kind of want to use this one here. So uh, these are adhesive. They're reusable and um, they're just wonderful stencils. So I have this on my piece and now I'm ready to stencil. So I'm going to be using the um, Preaching to the Choir chalk paste. It's black. I will put links to the stencil and the chalk paste in the description of this video and if you do decide to buy please purchase from my links as I do get a small percentage so I just put some chalk paste on the spreader here now these spreaders come bigger than this you get them for 50 cents and uh, you can cut them apart so you can cut them to whatever size you need for your project. Sometimes you need bigger spreaders and sometimes you need uh, smaller spreaders. So it just depends on uh, what you're doing at the time as to what size you're going to need. So I'm going to turn this upside down and continue stenciling from the bottom up now. And again, this is a chalk paste. It's called Preaching to the Choir, and the color of it is actually black. And we're using products from a maker studio. I will put links in the description of the video. And uh, you can view it either on YouTube or uh, Facebook. Now, um, I am on Liz's Craft page on Facebook, and you can uh, join that page, you can follow, you can like, and uh, if you set your notifications, uh, you can be notified when my videos uh, go, go out there. And I have Liz's Craft Friends, that's a group. It is a closed group. If you want to join that, please uh, answer the two questions. That's Liz's Craft Friends. Just look that up on Facebook. And once you answer the two questions, I will approve you for membership. And that's just where you can show uh, pictures of crafts that you have done. And I would greatly appreciate it if you all do any of the crafts that I show you. You put pictures out there in that group. So this is what this looks like. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to put my stencil face down in the water and that keeps the uh, chalk paste from clogging the screen portion of the stencil and once I get off of here I will clean it with a sponge. Now for yourselves as soon as you finish with your stencil you want to clean it. I just have this water here because um, I'm taping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my heat gun to dry this a little bit. It's so pretty I don't want to mess it up.
I think that's right now what this started out like was this and I took it apart I took these off I took this board off of here and I took all the papers off and I got that at the Dollar Tree so uh, now what we want to do is put this all together and we want to make a tassel. I'm still looking for this other um, tack here. Oh, I, I see it. I found it. So let me put that on here. Hopefully it'll it'll get on there and not. And there we go. Okay. So what I want to do is. I want to use some A6000 and hot glue to glue this on here. So I have my hot glue ready there and then my A6000 here to stick. And what I like to do is I like to do uh, part of it with the A6000 and that just, um, you know, if you go to a craft fair or whatever, you want you don't want your pieces to fall apart if you only use hot glue and the temperature is either hot or cold your items could potentially fall apart it has happened to me I did not appreciate it so I am using E6000 and hot glue so it should prevent that from happening the hot glue will keep it on here right now and the E6000 will take care of it later if it gets hot or cold. It's going to take care of it. So just a precaution. I mean, if you're just going to hang this in your house, um, you probably don't have to worry about it. But I like to sell my products if I can. And I did I did smudge smudge that a little bit. I wonder if I can get a brush. Let's see. Now um, you might want to spray and I'll, I'll get my nails spray this clear matte sealer on here because this is chalk paste and I will probably do that when I get off of here I'm not going to do it right now because it does smell pretty bad so I'm hoping these not thingies these um tacks will stay where I put them so I'm not going to glue them down so now I'm going to work on this hole so I want to get my exacto knife and then I'm just cutting around the hole I guess I didn't really need to mark it on the back so you can eliminate that step okay. I do want to clean this out a little bit with my scissors so there's what we have so far so you could leave it like this if you want. However, I want to put, um, I had this from another project. It's just a piece of raffia or whatever that was on one of the Dollar Tree things from um, uh, from the fall decorations. So I'm just going to put that right at the top here in the center. So I'm just going to put a blob of glue there. And I'm just going to hold this down for a couple minutes, a couple seconds. 
And then the next thing I want to do is make a tassel. So I just have this jute. Uh, it says heavy, but you can use whatever, whatever jute you have. And I'm just going to make a tassel. So I'm going to use my fingers, and I'm going to go splay them out a little bit. I want the end of my jute to be down here. And then I'm just going to wrap it several times. And I'm not counting or anything. So it's just however many times you think is going to make the uh, full tassel like you want. So let's take a look at that. I think that's pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this there. And then what I'm going to do is take the jute and I'm going to make a loop. Put the loop down at the bottom there and then I have my top part here. So I'm wrapping over top of the top part and then I'm just wrapping around it. Just around and around. however many times you want it to be. Just cut the end and then what I'm going to do is take this end and put it through the loop and then pull this up. And that way it puts your string up in there so you don't have a knot or anything like that. You just want to trim that up and you want to trim this one up and then you want to cut you want to cut these loops here. And then I forgot, we also need to put a string on here to hang our tassel. So I'm just going to put a string of jute through all the loops. And then I'm just going to tie a knot, a, a tight knot around the loops. Just like that. Okay, and there you have your tassel. And I want to put a couple of uh, beads on there. So I have three wooden beads and I'm just putting the two pieces of um, jute through my bead holes Yeah, I'm going to pull my string tight. And then I'm going to tie a knot over top of my beads. And then I'm going to tie a knot. Well, I want to tie it onto my board first. So. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and decorate my uh, tassel. So this is the back part where we pull the string through and cut it off. This is the front part, so I want to glue this button right on there. And I'm just going to hot glue it on. So there we have it. 
and then I'm going to um, tie this onto my board here. And you need to decide where you want it to be on your board. And I think what I'm going to do is put the two pieces together and then tie the knot that way. Okay, so just like that. There we have our tassel. So we have God is our refuge and strength and very present help in trouble. And I will spray that with my clear um, my clear sealer when I get off of here so that my uh, chop paste is not going to run or anything like that. I think I'm just going to trim up this bow a little bit so that it's not into my words so much. Just a tad. So there's what we have. So what do you guys think? If you like this, please do this, either on Facebook or um, YouTube. And my YouTube channel is Liz Yonke, and it's L-I-Z-Y-O-N-K-E-Y. -E and um, I'll see you back next in the next video. In the meantime, keep crafting, my friends. Bye.